Hi, I'm Stephanie here with Shack Spindle Company. Today we're going to talk about spinning a thick and thin yarn used for hand weaving. I have the wheels set up with a slow whirl. I want the flyer to move slowly and the yarn to draw on quickly because this yarn does not require a lot of twists. Join the yarn and draft a backward draw almost to the end of the staple length. You are going to notice that now you have a thick bump and a very thin section. Pinch the fiber at the top of the drafting triangle. I'm going to hold the thin section and draft back again until it looks like the fiber is going to break apart. Slide your forward hand over the fragile looking section and you will see that you have created another thick and thin section. An important part of this technique is that you draft all the way out to the point where only the tips of each staple length are overlapping. As you bring your forward hand back, you can add a little extra twist with your thumb and forefinger to make the join in the thin sections feel more secure. Periodically while spinning, you will want to stop and make a plyback sample. This will help you make sure to keep your spinning on track for your project. For this project, when I ply, I'm going to try to line up the bulky sections of the yarn with each other. So I want to try to emulate that in my plyback sample. The plyback sample gives you a target to shoot for as you continue to spin for your project. After I do my plyback sample, I want to make sure that the yarn has some abrasion resistance since I'm going to be using it for weaving on a rigid heddle. And that heddle will be moving back and forth across the yarn as you weave. First, let's take a look at the variable dent reed. In this reed, we're able to put in sections of different dents. A dent is how many slots and holes you have per inch, giving you the EPI, or ends per inch. You can see that these are much closer, and these are much further apart. These large sections work really well for bulky yarns, but I do want to test it. So, to test the yarn, I'm going to use my orifice hook and pull the yarn through a hole in the reed. When you are using a yarn that doesn't hold up well to abrasion resistance, it is best to place those yarns in the slots and leave the stronger yarns for the holes. This is why I am trying out the hole, because I am planning on threading this entire section with the thick and thin yarn. I am going to pull it through, and it moves through very easily. I will move it through a couple more times and I am not seeing any abrasion coming up on the thick part. This tells me that my yarn is on track for my project. If you find that the yarn that you have spun does not move freely through the hole because the yarn is too thick, you will want to adjust your wheel. You will want to decrease the take up tension of your wheel and, if possible, increase the length of your drafts. This will reduce the diameter of the thick sections of your yarn. And if your yarn 
is, in the thick sections is too skinny, you want to increase the take up of your wheel and try not to draft out quite as far between your thick and thin spaces. If this is your first time using hand spun in your weaving, fear not. Hand spun yarn has been used in the warp and the weft for thousands of years. Many weavers, when assessing the yarn for the warp, talk about the tensile strength. If you test your yarn by pulling on it and it's holding together, chances are it will be a suitable warp on a rigid heddle loom. A rigid heddle loom is so great for hand spun because you can weave with less tension than on a floor loom. The secret why the shack rigid heddle looms, such as the flip and the cricket, tension is so adjustable, is in the ratchet gear. You can see that the spacing between each of the teeth is very close together. This allows you to micromanage the tension, making the use of hand spun a lot less scary. For left hand in the front plying, set your cape behind you on the right. And right hand in the front, set your cape behind you on the left. I'm going to take the ends from the two bobbins and overlap them with the end of my leader. Now I'm going to do my best to line up the thick parts of the yarn with each other. At the very beginning, it doesn't seem to line up. So I will fudge it a bit so that the next section lines up a little bit better. I'm not going to worry about that since the big bump that I'm creating is going to be at the very, very beginning. I'm going to just slide back a bit to the point where my thin sections are lined up. I also like to have my index finger between the two yarns that I am plying so that I can use my hand to offer tension on either yarn to get a more even ply. Much of the magic of plying will happen underneath your back hand as you apply tension either with your thumb or your third finger and pinky. While spinning, I'm using both my front and back hands to try to line up the thick and thin sections the best I can. My front hand, as it guides in the twist, is very light and I try not to press out any of the air and leave the fiber as lofty as possible. I've come to a point where my thick and thin sections are not lining up as I like. So I'm going to break the yarn I want to reposition and place the end between the plies that have already been created and see if I can realign my thick and thin sections. you will notice that with the thick and thin yarn, you have spaces of the thick that require very little twist and spaces of the thinner yarn that have a little more twist. This is where finishing is really going to help with the purpose of the yarn I plan on using. I plan on using this in the River Ripple scarf. So it is going to go into a rigid heddle and that heddle will be working back and forth across the warp as I weave. What I would like to do is get my sink full of hot water, as hot as I can, and add a little bit of soap. I use whatever dish soap is available at the time. Right now, next to my sink, it happens to be Method Clementine. I put the skein of yarn after it has been tied loosely into the sink and let it sit for 15 minutes. Being here in Colorado, 
the water does not stay hot for long. So I put a sheet, a cookie sheet, over my sink to try to keep the heat in. I let the skein sit for about 15 minutes. Then, in order to keep that nice finish of the smoothness over the thick parts, I'm going to shock it. So I'm going to pull it out of the very hot water and rinse it in very, very cold. This slightly felts the large sections and adds to the integrity of the yarn. I don't flap or thwack the yarn after that because I don't want the yarn to bloom or blossom any more than it has in the wet finishing process. I put my hands inside the skein and give it a little tug. Then I hang it over my door to dry. Then I am going to wind it into a center pull ball so I'm ready to get warped.